Hi, everybody. I wanted to just play that uh, little piece of the alma mater for you because I know if you're like me, you're missing not the building, but you're missing the community. Things sure have been different and sure are different here around school without everybody being here. So um, I thought I would play a little bit of that version of the alma mater. That was Natasha Popovich. She graduated from our school about seven years ago and she uh, re recorded that version. And at the end of this, we're going to play the, the whole thing for you. So you'll get to hear Natasha sing the entire alma mater with a, a, a little video that uh, will, will tug at your heart a little bit from a few years ago. So hopefully you will stay tuned to the end to see that video. I wanted to mention to you that over the weekend, we sent out a notice letting people know we were getting phone calls last week because the people were thinking that we were coming back to school this week. And so right now, Mayor Garcetti has asked everyone to please continue to shelter at home until May the 15th. And so that's what the notice said. But I want to be realistic with everybody. And I, I think that we need to be mentally prepared. Now, not, this is not official. But I do think we need to be mentally prepared for not returning to school for the remainder of the school year. I, I just don't see how it would be possible. I think that it would be smarter for us to be thinking about what it is going to look like when we return to school in the fall, in August or September, which we haven't set a, a definite date for that yet either because, of course, everything is still up in the air. But I do think that we have to be realistic and that with this virus still ravaging our country and our city, our world, it would be probably foolish for us to think that we were going to bring over 1,100 people onto this block uh, in just a few weeks. Because I, I just don't think that we are prepared to initiate all of the social distancing that's going to be required for us to all be safe. So again, nothing official, but I do think that it's time for us to start to entertain the idea that we will most likely not return for this school year in the form that we were hoping for. And that was all coming back here to campus. So I will keep you informed as new information becomes available. And uh, I know that's probably disappointing. And, you know, hof hopefully there'll be some miracle and we will be able to come back. But as of right now, I, I do think that we have to um, get used to the idea that we're going to be distance learning for the remainder of the school year. Okay. Um, I also um, wanted to say to you that I had last time I sent a message I asked people to hold open uh, I think it was last Sunday for a viewing party that we were going to have and in the end when we thought about it we decided not to screen that particular documentary but we are looking at another documentary that this school has done and we're working with the Carter Center on um, a, a viewing party that St. Genevieve and the Carter Center would do together and uh, we, we don't have a date for that yet. We're hoping to have it soon. Um, so keep your fingers crossed that details will be worked out with us in the Carter Center so that we can have a, uh, a viewing party together. All right. I also want to ask a big favor of every student and every family. And that is, we need your help with marketing. Now that the school is basically shuttered and we are not able to bring groups of people onto the campus for tours, I'm going to be asking you to spread the word about St. Genevieve. And we have heard from so many of you. And I do thank every one of you that's taken the time to write letters. Teachers have shared the letters with me. I tend to share the letters with the entire staff because every time we get a positive letter from uh, one of you congratulating us or lifting us about the good work that we're doing with the distance learning, 
I usually will send it out to every staff member because it lifts all of us. And so it has meant a great deal to all of us. And on behalf of all the teachers, all the coaches, everybody who re receives these notes, um, I thank you for taking the time not only to recognize the diligent uh, and inspirational work of our teachers, but I thank you for taking the time to write to us about it. But I would also ask you, we're going to be sometime in May, and again, the date to be determined, but we're going to be hosting a virtual open house. We are going to ask every family to bring at least one person to that virtual open house. And uh, more details will be coming. I'm going to be talking with the teachers later today about how we can possibly turn this into a school-wide assignment from preschool all the way through 12th grade. But um, we, are, we are going to ask you to continue to help spread the word of the inspirational work of our teachers and of our students. So please keep that in mind. And finally, the last thing I want to mention to you. I don't know how you're spending your time, but I, I have been looking for inspiration. I heard someone talking the other day about seeking out God's grace in time of crisis. I don't know about you, but I'm always investigating ways to bring the grace of God into my life, even before the crisis. And one of the things that a speaker said the other day that really struck me was, God's grace eludes most of us. We miss it. We miss out on it. Now, I don't know if you are someone that you have been fortunate enough. I know that we all have experienced the grace of God in our lives. I don't know if we always recognize it. I don't know if we're always open to it. And so when the speaker went on uh, to explain why God's grace is often elusive to us, he explained that in order for us to experience the grace of God in our daily lives, in our hearts, it usually requires us to change. And that we as human beings, one of the things that frightens us most in life is the idea of change. Sometimes, even though we might not be happy individuals, we know how to be unhappy. And we will choose to stay in the same mental space that we are rather than being open to changing the way that we do things. And so I don't know where you are in your faith journey. And I don't know, well, I don't know of a single person that wouldn't be open to receiving God's grace. But the one thing I do know is that every single one of us right now, we're going through a period of change. I mean, our lives have changed dramatically in the last six weeks, dramatically. And it looks like we're probably going to continue to have changes ahead. So since we are in this period of involuntary change, it's happening whether we like it or not. And that means that we are changing personally. And so my challenge for you this week is that since we are already making changes in our lives, let us find ways to look for, to be open to, and to receive the grace of God. Happy Easter, everybody. And now stay tuned for uh, this little video about our alma mater. Thank mm -hmm. you. 